Hi, in this video I will demonstrate how you can write an essay using a combination of three different tools Obsidian note-taking app, the Infranodus Knowledge Graph AI Obsidian plugin that visualizes the text as a network and shows you connections and gaps between ideas which can be really useful if you want to generate some interesting questions to help you move your research further and ChatGPT, specifically critical GPT, a custom GPT that we developed to help people question their own ideas. You will see how you can take an article from something like this, which is just a blank page or a writer's blog, to something like that, where you have a finished article here uh, that is published and read by people. So if you're interested to see how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate step by step. Also, please subscribe to this video so that others interested in the same topic get recommended this video and it can be seen by more people. So first of all, when I begin to write, I like to start with the topic that I'm interested in. In this case, it was something like an interaction I had that made me think about increasing polarization and taking sides. And I start with the working title for my essay. It doesn't have to be the final one. So here it's going to be, what side are you on? I also like to think directly which context it's going to be published in, right? So for example, um, here I have my own blog, Polysingularity, where I want to publish this article. And I know it's kind of like a blog uh, where I write in a way where I try to look at something from many different perspectives, right? So I already have a methodology in mind that I'm going to use to write for this blog. And I have a topic, so that's great. Then, of course, we come to the question of what do you actually start writing with? Um, I like to start from just one sentence that describes the whole idea. So I'll say something like, too often we are pushed to take sides, which leads to more polarization and doesn't really solve the underlying issues we took the side on. So something like this, I don't care at this moment to be grammatically correct, it's just to write down some thoughts. And then I go open in front of this graph, here and then this text is going to be visualized as a graph in the Infranodus Obsidian plugin where the words are the nodes and the co-occurrences are the connections. If the words appear in the same context together, they will be closer to each other and have the same color. So here I have two topics. One is the direction, so it's about taking side, and resolution. So how does it help resolving stuff? So, so this gives me a really nice overview of the main sort of cluster of ideas I'm going to reiterate in this article. And here I'm following a technique that a journalist once explained to me. Um, I don't remember how it's called exactly, but the idea is that you start with a loop, so a very short loop to catch attention that will sort of summarize the whole content of the essay that you're going to write. In this case, it's this sentence here. And then when you continue writing, you expand on this loop and you add more and more details. So you loop it kind of uh, increases in size and also density. And that is made in order to capture attention of people who have different attention time spans. So if somebody has only five seconds, they can read the sentence and understand what the article is about. If someone has more time, they can read more where you elaborate in more detail and provide more examples and so on. I, th I think this technique has a name, so if you remember the name, please uh, leave it in the comments, uh, but I don't remember. So I find it quite useful for writing, especially for the internet, because people don't have so much attention, they don't have so much time to read, so that is an effective way to communicate your thoughts, even to somebody who has only a few seconds to read, All right? So I'm going to write the first sentence, I visualize it within Fernando's directly to see what are the main topics here. And then I try to elaborate. So I think, okay, do I want to add something here, like a third type of cluster maybe, or do I want to go into more detail here? For instance, here, I think it's okay to start with this binary opposition because this is also something I want to be against. So I want to present it first also in the form of the article and then to kind of question it, right? So I can continue writing and here I'm going to do like a fast version of it. So I'm not going to take care of grammar so much, but I also would not recommend you to actually be too precise at this point. You just want to jot some ideas down and get the first sort of thoughts that are on the surface outside on the computer, um, on, on the screen so that you can then work with them later, right? So 
Here I'm going to go and give some examples. I'm going to, to say woke or conservative, uh, anti and pro. Um, let's use another example, one and zero, uh, good and bad, and so on. Right, so here I'm listing a few sites. If I then visualize this graph again in Infernodus, I will see that uh, I kind of expanded on those two clusters, but I still have those clusters. And now this one became a little bit more about politics, and this one that was in resolution became more about social problems. So that's interesting because it kind of helps me see how my discourse is evolving, right? And there I can say that at this point, what can be interesting is to kind of like continue writing as much as you can until you write a couple of paragraphs. It doesn't have to be grammatically correct, but you want to gather some surface thoughts from yourself on this subject and to present it to the reader. So here I have already something prepared where I wrote some ideas before. So you see I have a paragraph, a few sentences, and here the structure is much more complex, but not too complex yet. And the advantage of visualizing it in Infernodus like this is that you can always have a bird's eye view, a high level overview of your essay, right? So here I see one topic is on opposition dynamics. I can make it a little bit bigger so you can see better. Global reduction. That actually is a strange name. So I'm going to click on the context button to see uh, what it's about. And now I understand that it's about reducing complex topics to very simple ones. Uh, defining realities, so that also I can see here that uh, that people are using straight lines to define reality in its complexity, but actually uh, there are much more complex ways and processes uh, that we need to be aware of, and then how it's leading to political divides and how we can also witness that in political systems, right? So here I wrote the first article. And for example, if at this point I encounter some sort of writer's block and I don't know how to expand on the subject, this is where the Infranodus plugin comes very handy because uh, I can then click on the gaps. It's going to identify the structural gaps in the text, so the clusters of words that could be better connected or the clusters of ideas that could be better connected in this essay. And then it proposes me to think of connections between them. So for example, opposition dynamics and defining reality. So I can try to come up with a question myself. I don't even need to use the AI at this point. I will ask myself, what is the relation between opposition dynamics and defining rel uh, realities? I can say that maybe uh, when we start to think in terms of oppositions more and more, this is going to define our perception of reality. We will see everything in black and white. This leads to polarization, dangerous for society. So. I could write something like this and uh, continue elaborating on this topic, connecting the ideas that I laid out in the previous paragraph. What I can also do is to use the built-in Infernodus AI generation feature that tries to generate a question for me based on this gap, right? So here it says, how does the process of simplifying complex realities into binary categories influence the radicalization of societal groups and the strengthening of divisions within those realities. So that's interesting. Now I can go into politics, for example, and describe a little bit better how uh, we can witness an increasing radicalization of politics all over the place, radical left, radical right, and uh, that maybe it's a sign that we need to stop taking sides and try to think in terms of spectrums, multiple dimensions and so on. So I can go into this kind of geometrical solution of this binary problem, right? So this is where I would go. I can also reload the gap, right? And look at some other interesting gaps. So for example, here, defining realities and reducing things. So that would be more of a philosophical question. How do we reduce uh, our perception of reality to some really simple frameworks that don't really help us, right? So I already have two threads that I can unfold. One, the political, another one, philosophical, right? So then I'm going to write a few more things. I'm going to have a few more paragraphs like you can see here now. I don't want to write live as uh, I'm doing it because usually it takes maybe two to three hours. 
um, and you probably don't have so much time to watch this video, so I'm just kind of fast forwarding some steps here, right? So as you can see in my writing, I went into more examples. I, I found some specific events in our nearest history, like for instance, COVID and how everyone was splitting over, are you pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine? Then Israel-Palestine conflict, of course, uh, Ukraine, Russia. And I'm just kind of providing a few examples of how this mindset works in reality and what it leads to. And uh, spoiler, doesn't lead to anything. Take COVID and vaccines or take any war conflict, no matter how much people fight, nothing is changed, right? So that's kind of like um, the outcome of this part of my article, that this doesn't work, only leads to extreme politics, polarization, violence, doesn't solve the real problems. And here I have actually kind of almost like uh, the full version of the article, which consists of maybe eight paragraphs. And I want to show you what I would do next, right? So one thing that I like to do when I think like I finished writing, um, I would then try to challenge myself and see if first I covered all the topics I was interested in, Second, if I'm missing something, if I could write about something else that I maybe haven't thought of, right? So in order to see all the topics, the graph visualization of Infernodus in Obsidian is really good. I wrote this article, I visualize it as a graph, I can see the main concepts. So on this granular level, I see that I'm talking about people, change, world, opposite sides. It seems pretty good to me. Uh, also something about virtue signaling, comfort. So there's a lot of different topic. Uh, but what Infranodus is advising me here is that I should connect the ideas better because it seems to be dispersed. So it's kind of like all over the place and maybe this article needs a little bit more connections about the different ideas I'm writing about. So that is an advice I can follow. How do I follow it? I can click on that button and Infernodus will highlight for me some of the topics that I could connect based on uh, the gaps that it identified. So here it's proposing me to connect uh, uh, two topics, one on change and one on effect. And if I don't know what those topics are, are about, I can just click on summary and Infernodus will summarize them for me or I can click on the context and explore each of them, right? So here it says, uh, how I'm talking about the problematic nature of reducing complex issues into binary choices, emphasizing severe consequences, and how I advocate for a more nuanced discussion that acknowledges complexity. So the first one was the effect, this kind of simplification of reality. The change is to embrace complexity and uh, inviting people to spend more time interacting with each other, trying to understand the nuances of each other's opinions and also the specific mechanisms how that could be done because of course it's easy to say but it's very hard to do. So here's proposing me to write more about this, right? Like if I read this then I would say okay maybe I should write more about the specific methodologies of doing it because I say what the effect is, I say what should be changed, maybe I should also write how it would be changed so that could give me one idea. Another idea is that I could also reload the gap and see some other stuff. So, for example, again, this effect of simplifying the world and oppression. So that's interesting because I don't know what this cluster on oppression is about. I can zoom in and see that it's talking about opposite sides, proving somebody wrong and how if somebody doesn't agree with you, uh, there is some kind of blackmail, coercion, censorship that make sure that you comply, right? So that's kind of like uh, another aspect of the problem is how do we reduce those mechanisms that make us uh, be more simple in how we think, right? So that would be like another way to explore this discourse and to take it further. And that's actually like a really nice process because you are reiteratively reloading those gaps, looking what are the connections you've missed and you try to think of those connections 
Um, if you have a, a cold start problem, you can always generate an AI question that will provide a hint for you on how these ideas could be uh, linked, right? So for example here, how the dynamics of communication and power in global conflicts mirror the public discourse on health crisis, influencing perceptions of responsibility and intervention strategies. So that's a very interesting idea. You see, it's kind of like saying, okay, so during COVID, there was a certain way of hang, having a public discourse where you either do something or you don't. And maybe this is the same thing now happening in terms of global conflicts, that there is only one side that is to blame, the other side is the victim. Both think uh, in a completely opposite way of each other. Uh, this doesn't help at all because as we saw with COVID and as we see now with military conflicts, it doesn't help. So you see, I'm kind of like really in the process of generating ideas here and it's working really nicely. And then once I come up with some idea, I would of course add something here and have the, like a modified version of text. The structure changes, it becomes more interconnected. The percentage was 64 in the previous version, now it's 61, so it's a bit more connected. And I can see here that it's much more centralized. It's focused on the topics of consequences, stigma, categorizing, relative, simplification and so on. So as you can see, the whole article can be written like this, uh, reiteratively using the graph, the gaps, the topics, and just finding interesting connections between those ideas. Also, where I like to use ChatGPT is to also somehow challenge my whole idea. So I will copy this text, go to ChatGPT, paste it here into critical GPT. I will provide a link in the description to this video. It's a custom GPT that we developed for writers. And then when I submit this text, you will see that it will try to read my article and challenge it in some way, right? So here it says, uh, of course, it first validates my idea because this is how ChatGPT is programmed, but then it says, uh, okay, so it kind of like re rephrases it. It talks about what I mentioned. It says that they don't have easy answers, but exploring them might open up new avenues for understanding the actions. And then it asks a question, what do you think could be the first practical step in moving away from this binary thinking? So again, you see, I mentioned it with the graph and here it confirms to me that it could be interesting to think of some practical steps, right? So that would be a very nice way to continue this article and to create uh, a really complete piece of work in a way where you provide your opinion on a topic and then uh, you propose a practical solution. And actually based on this feedback, I kind of started already writing about the practical solutions here. So I think the final version on Poly Singularity blog, it actually has uh, this full um, version with the practical solutions as well. Right, so what I want to point out here is that I'm not just going into ChatGPT and I'm not telling it um, write an article on this subject for me because we know that it's going to be generic, boring, and you will be able to see. I also don't do something like this where I write the first part and then I go continue, right? So I could of course do that, but I don't like when AI is doing the job for me because I anyway have to read it, but then I feel like I'm not writing, I'm just fixing someone else's mistakes and I'm trying to make a text look less generic. It's kind of like, I'm not a writer anymore. It's more like uh, I'm working at school or something and I don't really like that feeling. And you see that I wrote too much. So this is like, this for me doesn't work. I like to work in a much more iterative way where I write paragraph by, by paragraph, use the graph and sometimes the AI to generate the next thought and then I have to be the one who will unfold this idea. So of course this might be slower than having ChatGPT writing something for you but I think that the whole point of writing is to actually learn how to think. So I don't need the AI to think for me but I'm really happy to use it to kind of generate ideas and stimulate my thinking and improve my writing. So that's a very good way to do it. And uh, this is why I only use it for some kind of conceptual stuff like this, when I need to challenge my thinking, 
when I need to maybe rephrase something. So that could be like an interesting way of using ChatGPT in this case. Let's say if I have a sentence that I had maybe here at the beginning that I didn't like, I might go to ChatGPT, open the standard one and ask me it to rephrase. Right, so I can do this, or there's also a really nice tool called Quillbot. And in Quill, you can actually use a paraphraser automatically. So you just write the sentence, paraphrase, and then it's gonna do it for you. And sometimes it proposes some interesting ways of rewriting text. So that would be the way that I use the AI. Uh, not to write for me, but to write with me using Obsidian as, as an app to store my texts, Infranodus to visualize ideas, find gaps between them, and ChatGPT for some rephrasing and final touches, and then publishing it on my WordPress blog. One bonus track content to what I just said is that sometimes at this point when you finished writing, it makes sense to see what people are actually thinking about the subject. And that made give you some additional ideas that you haven't thought of before. So in this case, I like to use Infernodus market research app, and I will just write polarization because that's a topic I'm dealing with. And uh, here I can say I want to analyze the demand and I want to analyze popular search queries that relate to polarization. So here I have polarization, create a new graph. And what's going to happen is that Infernodus will import related search queries to polarization and show me what people are searching for. What are the patterns of search for this topic? And that might help me see if I missed something that could be interesting for my potential audience. So the word polarization is removed because otherwise if it was not, it would be taking too much space in the graph. And then I can see the context around it. So I see one light polarized. So polarization light. So that's kind of like a technical term. That's not what I'm interested in. But for example, here we see that there is something about polarizing power. So that's again like a very, it's a concept from physics. So we don't need this. But then we also have something about uh, political polarization. And I know that I talk about it in my article here, political polarization and psychology and groups and how groups behave. So that's interesting because it kind of talks about uh, this phenomena on a sociological level and that can also be pretty interesting. And I think I mentioned it in my article as well. So this quick check gives me an understanding that perhaps on the topic of polarization, I covered more or less the main interests of people. And then I can reiterate a few more times and uh, go into more detail. So for example, if I was uh, interested to write about binary thinking and see if it's a thing that people search for, for instance, in popular search queries, I would do that again. Probably it's gonna be lots of technical terms, but we don't know. Okay, so mindset is the word that's used a lot, right? And here I would then go back to my text and see if I'm using the word mindset anywhere. I don't, that could be a nice indication that maybe I need to because uh, if people search for uh, related search queries, they will also search for mindsets. I want them to find this article. That's why I should probably replace some references to mind or a way of thinking with the word mindset. So this is how I would kind of adjust it in the end. You could of course start with marketing research and first check what people actually want and then write something for them. But because I like to write for myself to also think about a certain topic, to write about something that uh, touched me. I would start with my own interest, write a few paragraphs, and then I would only then look into what people are interested in. So I kind of connect my interests to theirs and don't start from the interests of my audience only. I can do that if I'm writing for a business blog, for instance, that's a completely different topic. But here it's something that is interesting to me. So this is why I would do it this way. I hope you find this presentation helpful and if you have any questions, please let me know. I would be also very curious to hear about your experiences writing using this stack, Obsidian, Infranodus, and ChatGPT, and also Quillbot. And if you would like to try Infranodus, please go to infranodus.com. And if you would like to try the new Obsidian plugin, just go to the About menu and choose the Obsidian plugin and download the files, install it, 
into your Obsidian Vault and you can use it straight away after you put in the API key. So you would need a subscription for that. Thank you very much.